All right, this is a test of uh, how gradable the footage is uh, from a Canon Digital Rebel SL1. The settings on this particular camera, we're not gonna do anything with noise reduction, at least for this segment or anything like that. And I'll just give a, a brief walkthrough of some of the tools I use to set exposure and color so that I can color grade footage. Um, the, but before we do that, the settings on the camera uh, right now for the lighting in this room where our white balance is a sunlight, we are at uh, 1 60th of a second, F 2.8 and ISO 800 on uh, Canon's 24 millimeter pancake STM lens. Um, our, we've got sound coming in, so it's not recording the, uh, the uh, single microphone audio uh, on, the, on the camera itself. I'm running through a, a Tascam uh, DR60 Mark II, which has its output going. Uh, uh, so basically I've got a couple of uh, Sure FP1 and 5 wireless lav mic setup going into the Tascam, and then the Tascam's high camera out is going into the line in on uh, the uh, Digital Rebel SL1, as well as I'm recording uh, to the Tascam itself. So at any rate, some of the tools that we use, that I use, uh, to set my exposure and that sort of thing um, is uh, generally I will start off with this lux meter here, right? And I'll stick it on whatever it is I'm going to be recording and I just get a reading for where we are in terms of lux. Right now uh, I've got 228 lux falling right here on the lux meter. That's actually a little bit low. Um, I generally try to, to aim for having uh, you know approximately um, a thousand lux or so to be uh, hitting the uh, lux meter that allows me so if i doubled this 228 now we'd be approximately 500 ish that would allow me to keep all my settings the same but because i've doubled my light i can go down to iso 400. Okay, if I double it again to a thousand lux, that means I can shoot 1 60th of a second at f2.8 at ISO 200. If I get it up to 2000 lux, which we're starting to get pretty bright at that point, uh, we'd be up at, um, uh, or everything w would stay the same and we'd be down to ISO 100. You know, realistically, you can't really do that. You know, on an APS-C size sensor, you really want to be shooting like f4 or f5.6, just so that you've got a depth of field that's, you know, deep enough that most of your face is in focus. Um, especially if you're only going to be shooting, you know, three-ish, three to six feet away, you really want to be at f4 to f5.6. Uh, right around in that range. So if you have a th if you have a thousand uh, lux, if we're you know just under 250 here now, um, and we double it to 500, that means I can leave everything the same and double my f-stop to f4. If I get to a thousand lux, I can still stay at ISO 800 and open and shut my aperture down even more to f5.6. That would give me a significantly uh, deeper depth of field. So you really need to have a light meter like this just so you know where you are in terms of how many lux you're hitting. The goal is to try to get a thousand lux hitting uh, whatever it is that you are, are uh, going to be recording. That's kind of the minimum amount of light that I would consider acceptable for how much you know, you're going to have hitting this. So um, with that being said, uh, that's one tool. This this light meter I picked up on. These aren't even expensive tools. This particular light meter, the HS1010. I think I bought this on Amazon for. Uh, uh, gosh, it couldn't have been more than uh, twenty or thirty bucks. These things are dirt cheap. It's auto ranging. You can set it to auto range or set it to whatever range you want. Um, it'll record everything, everything all the way down to a few lux, all the way up to daylight in the several hundred thousand lux range. So this works really, really well. 
uh, just to get a sense for where you are in your light. And once you know where you are in your light and you know how much light you need to add or how much light you can subtract, once you get familiar with your camera system, you know right away. You can set your settings and say, well, my standard setting is ISO 800 F56 at 1 60th of a second. I need a thousand lux. And you can literally just take this and take a reading and adjust your lights until you have a thousand lux hitting whatever it is you're going to be shooting. So um, at least that's what the SL1, most Canon cameras, that's how pretty much APS-C cameras, that's pretty much how they uh, behave. Now, in addition to that, before I start shooting anything, I always take my exposure card. This is a Menon gray card. It's, it's an exposure card. And I put it on here and I, I get a good recording of it so that I can use this in my histogram later. Let's say I can't quite get my light right, so I, I've got it as close as I can. I'll take this, I'll throw it on there, and I'll get a good 10, 15 seconds. This is invaluable for setting your exposure after the fact in post if you can't quite get your exposure where you want it. Or let's say you're gonna underexpose a little bit. Let's say your lighting calls for ISO 1600, but on your particular camera, ISO 1600 is just awful. It's noisy as all get out and you don't have a good noise reduction plug-in, but you know ISO 800 is usable footage, so you underexpose, <laughs> you know, or, or you, you know, you dial your, 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 uh, your shutter down to 1 50th or 1 40th of a second. You don't want to go to 1 30th because it starts to get too blurry for motion. You can get away with that if you're shooting a lot of still stuff, but, you know, generally you want to have it about, you know, one, uh, one, uh, 180 off from whatever your shutter is. So if you're shooting 25p or 24p, you really want to have a like a 1 50th of a second shutter one to 1 40th at the slowest. At any rate, um, so then you dial down to ISO 800, take this, stick it on here so you know where your exposure should be. This, if it's properly exposed, will, will put a spike in the middle of your histogram, right smack uh, in the middle or just below the middle of your histogram. In addition to that, I almost always also just take a white sheet of paper. This is not for white balance. This is just so you know where your white levels are. I take a white sheet of paper and I stick it there. Right, actually, you know what? We can do this just so that it's not as dark. I take a white sheet of paper and I stick it there like that just so that I know that's white. Now compared to this here, this is blown out, but this should register as white near clipping, not clipping, near clipping. You should be able to see detail, shadow detail and that sort of thing. If, if the subject were wearing a white t-shirt, it would come out to the same brightness as this. So you don't actually want it to go totally clipping. You want this to be about two thirds of the way up the histogram to three quarters of the way up the histogram. You don't want it to go totally white. All right, because your lights are going to be totally white if you have lights in your in your uh, in your picture. Now, so that's the exposure, the gray exposure card, right? This is not a white balance card. This is for setting exposure. A white balance card we're going to put up here next. Uh, the the difference between the two is a white balance card evenly reflects all the light that's hitting it. Right, an exposure card doesn't. The exposure card reflects a certain percentage of the light hitting it. In this case, 18% of the light that hits this thing goes is what makes it to the camera, right? Um, a white balance card, if you'll notice, a white balance card is in fact a lighter color. So don't use your white balance card, you know, and it says Weibel on it, don't use your white balance card to set your exposure. And conversely, do not use your exposure card to set your white balance. And please never use a white sheet of paper to set your white balance. Just don't. It'll look wonky on the histogram. If you do an RGB parade and you have this in your frame, you can set your, uh, your tint and your color tone to where the RGB, the spike, the RGB parade spike that shows up for this, you can set it to where they're all even. They all 
top off at the same. And if you do that, your white balance will be fabulous if it's not already perfectly even. You can take this, stick it in your frame. You only need it for one or two frames, and you can use it as a reference for white balance. And that's a white balance card. It's, it's certified neutral, as you see here. And, and the reason why they say that is it neutrally reflects all wavelengths that, by the same amount. So they all reflect by the same amount. So you can take any color light and shine it on here and it'll reflect that light all by the same amount. And then when you can look at it on the histogram, you can then change your color tone and your tint until all of your, your red, green, and blue all are peaking at the same amount. And that is perfectly color balanced. And I can demonstrate that in another video. Uh, I do need to get some screen capture software to show that. But uh, that's, that's your white balance card. Now, in addition to that, I also, I know I'm probably getting a little excessive here, but <laughs> I also have a color checker, a Macbeth color checker chart. And this is invaluable for just doing a gut check on your colors. You've got uh, a black reference, you have a white reference, black reference, white reference. You have all of your various color references. You've got all of your different color tones. You'll know, you'll know if your video, you'll, you'll know beyond a shadow of a doubt if your video is having color problems. The minute you see this up there, after you do your white balance and you throw that up there, if your color's not right, this will show you. So I almost always use one of these. Now, in addition, this, this particular one also has uh, a white balance on it as well. So you can use this. This I prefer using the bigger one because it provides a bigger spike on the uh, RGB parade and on the histogram if you're taking stills. But this one you can also use for white balance. If your, white, if your color balance tool has a little uh, eyedropper, you can take it and eyedrop it right onto there like that just make sure you've got you know the light that you're shooting under hitting this and um, it will also provide a good white balance reference and it, it comes in a nice little color checker passport nice little wallet this is handy for for traveling with uh, but um, if I'm in the studio I very much prefer my larger card it just makes it easier um, and that's that's it so so what we're basically what we've got here is um, is uh, just a rundown of the white balance. And so what I'll do is just record another 10 or 15 seconds of, or, or maybe even close to a minute of video here, and then just kind of do a swipe between non-color balanced and color balanced, uh, and a basic color grade. So this is testing um, also the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud 2015 Premiere with the Lumetri uh, uh, color correction suite. So this also will allow me to test that. And we can move back a little. I can't punch in for focus. And I'm not on autofocus, but but essentially, uh, you know, this has got a pretty good amount of, well, I can do this. And let's just do this so that we can get a good sense for shadow detail, right? So that's shadow detail that would be underneath shadow detail that would be under, see how shallow that depth of field is. This is why you don't really want to shoot at f2.8. You really want to be up on uh, f5.6, f4, f5.6, somewhere around there, because the minute you get on up into f2.8 territory, um, or f2, or f1.4, um, your, your depth of field on APS-C sensors becomes so so incredibly small that uh, that it becomes exceedingly difficult to uh, get focus, especially if you're using some of the newer STM lenses. The the focus ring on it isn't quite big enough, you know, and you want to kind of do manual focus. Um, the but at any rate. Um, you really want to have, you know, a much deeper depth of field. Either that or you, or you want to shoot with a smaller sensor. An APS-C sensor by, you know, video standards is massive. It's the same size as Super 35 in film standards, so which is a pretty decent sized uh, image area. 
So, you know, you can get by with micro four thirds, um, you know, the same f-stop for micro four thirds give you a significantly higher um, uh, or a significantly larger depth of field. Same thing if you have like a one inch sensor or something along those lines. So at any rate, uh, should be pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and uh, stop this and see where we're at. 